that we're no longer slaves to fear, sin, or anything that weighs us that weighs us down, Lord. We thank we thank you so much for that, Lord. Amen. Um. Before I get into my message, we're gonna go gonna go into our announcements for the week. Um, offering plates are in the are on the back seats by the doorway. Or you can also give online through our church website, anewwayassembly.com. Um, next Sunday, my good, my good friend and brother Rob Cave is going to be preaching. It's going to be awesome. Going to be awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll be watching later. I have, a, I, have, I have a prior commitment, or actually a last-minute commitment, but it is what it is. But anyway... Um, Next Sunday will also be our our um, monthly coffee hour of fellowship, following at the end of the service, because like Pastor Dom says, our tag the ch- our church's tagline is building relationships one step at a time, and we do these things to um, to build really help to try to build relationships with one another, and got the Lord's really in, in into that kind of stuff. Um, and Pastor Dom will be returning to. Will be returning home on fr- on Friday afternoon. He's away. He's a he's away with Sister Tracy visiting visiting fam- family down in Georgia. Um, after the ser- after the service, after the service um today, um few the few the guy. We need a few of the guys who attend um the, normally attend the Wednesday night service to stay after service to set up the tables and chairs in the front of the sanctuary like it's set up norm- normally to so it'll be ready for Wednesday night and one f- one final one final thing um anybody who brought a fan in to help with help dry the wet ba- the wet basement the 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 with because of the flood lap this past weekend last weekend um you can pick you can pick up the, you can pick that up those up in the uh, yellow room outside out, outside of the downstairs bathrooms, so, so if you want want to get your fan, have your fans back, you can, you can go, you can get them down the ba- down the basement. Um, I'll go into my, me- I'm gonna go into my message. Um, of the title of my message is "What is God's Normal?" Um, I had the idea for for this, but not too long after Pastor Don asked asked me asked me to preach. He asked me probably a, several weeks ago. But I took the time to wait and pray and really think about it. And, and I've also, because the Lord's done this to me a few times, when I've, I've almost been too prepared, had, a sermon, had, had, an idea, had an idea ready for a message, like a month in advance, because I'm, I'm a planner. I like getting things done, getting things done so I, could, so I can go on, go on about my business. But I've had several times when, were, t- several times when the Lord's changed totally, said, Pete, you may have you may have this idea. You're going this you're going this way today. I'm like, okay, For who who am I to, who am I to go go against the go against the voice of the Lord? You know, but and I've also waited because I've been really busy at my at my 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 new job my new job. I've been, I've been at a new job for a couple months now, and I'm so thankful for that. God provide God. It's the whole the way God. Open that, open the door for this the job. It was just such an awesome testimony, but I don't want to bo- uh, But I don't want to go. I don't want to go on too too long. But all uh, the only thing I will say, it was such a God. It was such a God thing. And in the midst of being when I was unemployed, the Lord. I'll tell you one thing. The Lord provided for my family and I in such an awesome way. And we, we never we never lacked for, we never lacked for anything. That's only because of Him. And good and awesome people praying for us and help helping us. A lot, a lot of you here were praying for us as well, and I th- and we're very, we're very we're very thankful for that. Um, I'm going to go into my message. Um, I was praying about what to share, and the thought came to my mind about how so many people you know, over the last couple years, with everything that's been going on with COVID and all this other stuff, the, I was thinking about. The concept of normalcy, the normal, and how people talk about a new normal, in just in the midst of everything. But I, I had th- another thought came to my came to my head. 
about what is God's normal. With that being said, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk a little bit about what God's concept of normal is. But not only that, how are we supposed to respond to His normal? The one thing that we need to keep in mind when it comes to God's normal is that we're not called to conform to the pattern of this world like most people do. Um, my first set of verses, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 12, and I'll be, re- I'll be reading verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And here's the, here's the verse I want to go, um, I'm going to touch on. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As believers, we're not supposed to conform to or live live, or act like the world. The reason being is, the the reason being, we're we're called to be an example of how to live for him. him. Most people that that don't know him, they think, ah, this is... Why, why are you trying to? Why are you trying to be? Di- why are you trying to be different? Why can't you just be normal? Here's why. Here's my. Here's my thought about normal. Why be normal? It's just a setting on the washing machine, anyways. But, um, my. I'm gonna go. My. My next verse I want to go to. I'm gonna go to First Corinthians, chapter one. And I'm going to be reading verses 27 through 29. Okay, it says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put, put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the, of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are, God, which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, the things that are that no flesh would, glor- would glory in his presence um, I'm, the main the main verse that I wanted to touch on here was 20 was verse 27 god is cho- god god is cho- people, people may think it's foolish to live to, to truly live for god and and would and rather rather just be normal, be, just be like everybody else. Nah, no thanks, I'm good. <laughs> anyway, but we can't be so. And 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 trying to live for God, some people are trying to like trying to are scratching their heads like, and especially when God shows things like, how did God do that? Like I thought like with when I was when I was unemployed, it's like the Lord. The Lord, all I can, all I can, the only way I can explain it is the Lord provided in such a way. It's like, in my own natural mind, I was trying to, I was scratching my head. I'm like, God, how did you do that? Like, so basically, it kind of, it can, it can, confound, it confounded me. That, like, basically, how God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And I'll be the first to admit, I'm not as, I, I don't consider myself a wise man. Okay, you know what? Truthfully, none, none of us really are. Let's, if we want to be totally real. Anyway, um, next verse I want to go to is First Peter chapter two. And I'll be reading verses nine and 10. It says, "But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light." Once were not not a people, but now are but are now the people of God, who have, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Um, first thing I want to touch on is in the King James version of the Bible, instead of, instead of his own special people, it says a peculiar people. Think about that word. Think about that word, peculiar. It means different. Some people might say strange. The world. Thinks thinks it thinks it's think it's strange for thinks it strange for for us to be serving God. But think about this one. 
God considers it completely normal to serve to serve Him, and and trying to and but he, he, God also considers trying to live like the world is peculiar and strange. I had that thought, and like like wow, my mind kind of ran 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 with that for a little while. So I'm like I'm like how about that? It's like it's it kind of it's like back it's like kind of vice versa. Like the world thinks we're we're crazy because we serve God. <laughs> and sometimes we think we think the world's crazy because we're not they're not serving God. So anyway, I want to talk one little little bit about what seemed to be I would call normal operating procedure during the days of that Jesus walked the earth and and when the Bible was written. All throughout the Bible, there was there were, it's filled with accounts of so many things that happened, like miracles, healings, deliverance, provision, a lot of, a lot of supernatural, supernatural things, manifestations, and most importantly, people turning to Jesus and their lives being transformed. This is God's normal. And if we're called to be like him, we should be seeing, those, we should be seeing the, the, these things happen. But better than that, greater than that, because... I'm just going to refer to this verse, John chapter 4, 14, I mean, verses 12 through 14, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than, he, than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, if you ask it anything in my name, I will do it. But I want to touch, I want to, kind of go touch on touch on something that um this may step on up step on some people's toes so but I got broad shoulders I could take I could take it whatever <laughs> anyway what I what I've seen seen something happening in a lot of the large some of the larger body of Christ sometimes so many believers they get so they get so wrapped up in they they want some we want something they want something so real they end up chasing after Men and women of God, and also chase at they want they want so bad to see the miracles, the manifestations, and revival. But it's at the expense of seeking the one who truly does all of that, who could truly do all of that. That's Jesus. I'm going to go to a passage. I'm going to refer to a passage. You might not think make goes along with what I'm talking about here, but it does. Just hang with me for a second, okay? Um, I'm going to be reading Mark chapter 16. Verses 15 through 18. And it's a very familiar passage because it's part of the Great Commission. But anyway, it says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these, these signs will follow those who believe. That's what I'm going to touch on. I'm going to touch on that in just a second. Um, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will, they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These verses, like I said, these verses encompass what's called the grace, what we call the Great Commission. But I'm focusing on that, that verse about these signs shall follow them that believe. Think about that word follow. I think a lot of us have it backwards. We're cha- a, a lot... So, I think a lot of us we chase at we sometimes find ourselves chasing after the signs, the wonders, the miracles, but we're not seeking Him. And even those in the world chase after chase after they're looking for some sort of sign. And and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I've done it. Before, I've done it too. I'll, I'm this is pre this is preaching just as much to me as it's, it's preaching to everybody anybody else. Anything I anything I preach, the Lord speak the Lord speak to me and ministered to me about my um first so anyway i'm going to go to uh, matthew chapter 12 um verses 38 through 42 okay it says then some of the scribes and pharisees answered saying teacher we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given, given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. 
For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three three days and three nights in the heart in the heart of the earth. And the men of Nineveh will will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, there, indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in, in the judgment, in, in the judgment with this generation, and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than, a greater than Solomon is here. Um, basically, this, the, wor- this wor- all, the world, the world, we seek, they seek after a sign in that, and it's considered e- it's considered evil, even adulterous, because we're trying to seek any something other than Christ. With all that being said, might think of, you might want to ask the, might ask the question: What are we supposed to be doing? Um, it it's uh, it's all encompassed in the verses I I mentioned before in Mark chapter sixteen, and I'm also going to refer to Matthew chapter twenty eight verses eighteen through twenty, which is another part of the Great Commission. And Jesus says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in, he- in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Every single one of us as believers have a, have a responsibility to fulfill that, the Great Commission. It's not, up to, it's not just up to the pastor. It's not up to ministers. It's not up to the leadership. It's not up to the five-fold ministries of the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, or evangelist. It's up to, it's up to those, those people to train up and equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, which, go, which kind of goes to my neck, my... It's actually going to be my last pa- my last passage, so you can all say hallelujah to that. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Appreciate that. And and he himself. <laughs> Sorry, that cracked that cracked me up. That that was good. That was good. And he himself gave himself to be a po- gave himself to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we shall no longer be children tossed to and fro, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craft cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speak the truth in love. May grow up in all in, in all things into him who is who is the head, Christ. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect effect of working, by every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. It is every believer's responsibility to go out into the world, go out in the world, and preach the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ, His love for us, and how He has a plan for our lives. He wants to change us and transform us and deliver us from our sins, and He wants us to lay those sin, those things down at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross, not just that. We also need to be making disciples. We do that by encouraging those that come to know the Lord. To, that come to know Jesus, train them up, kind of take them on, take them under the, under your wing, and nurture them until they're until they're at a place where they can go preach the gospel themselves. And it's up to us to be led by the Holy Spirit in the thing in the things that we do to fulfill that great commission, and not be led of the flesh. That because that's that's dangerous when we when we're when we're trying to do do the things of God and. In our in our flesh, can lead to some very dangerous things, and could it's just wouldn't be a very good thing. 
Also, we can't get caught up in chasing after the signs, the wonders, and manifestations. Because if we get so focused on that, we miss what's truly important. And that is sharing the gospel, making disciples, training people up, and most importantly, G and we 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 will miss we won't be so fo won't be focused on Jesus and our relationship with Him. When we're focused on what's really important, all the other stuff will follow, so we won't have to chase it. That, my friends, is God's normal. And and I think I'm I'm pretty well. I am pretty well done. Yay! <laughs> no, just kidding. All right. Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Lord God, for this message, Lord, you've given me, Lord God. Lord, it was something you've been speaking to me about for a long, for a long time in a lot, of a, lot of different, a lot of different regards. You spoke to me about a lot of different things in this. Lord God, help us to realize what's, true, what's truly important, seeking after you, um, sharing sharing your gospel to, to the world around us um, in, our, in our spheres of influence and that we don't forget our, you and our relationship with you. Lord God, continue, continue all, all the time, Lord God, to help us to, to, just, um, to just stay focused on you and, and, and just keep, keep focused on our relationship with you and all the other, all the other things will follow. They'll, like the any any type of heal, healings manifestations, people getting set free or whatever, that's gonna follow. That's gonna that's that's gonna follow if we're just if we're just focused on you. All that all that other stuff's gonna fall into place. So we don't have to chase it. So we don't have to chase it. We can believe for, we can believe you for it, but we don't have to chase it. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord God. You. I hope. I hope this. I I pray, Lord, that this message was. A most importantly, a blessing to your heart, to your heart, Lord God, and Lord, that would touch touch people's touch people's hearts, whether whether here or, or um, those that watch those that watch late that are watching now or watch late watch later on, Lord, Lord God, I just pray you bless each each and every person here, Lord God, and everybody who's, everybody that's watching, Lord. I pray, pray, I pray, Lord, your hand of protection be round about each and every person that's that's here, Lord God. Lord, keep us keep us all safe until the next time we co we come together again. And I also pray I also pray pray for my brother my brother Rob for ne for next week, Lord God, that you would anoint him as he as he preaches as he preaches next week, Lord God. I really I feel like you, Lord, you've given given him a really good word to sh to share with to share with the folks uh, next week, Lord. In your precious name, Amen. Well, God God bless you all. I hope you all have a Good rest, good rest of the day, and like Pastor Nam says, don't forget your kids. We don't want, we don't want to see, we we want to find them, we want to find them tomorrow morning. <laughs>